Welcome back to Unsure's Excel Academy. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to use Power Pivot to consolidate data in multiple data sets in Excel. This Excel file, which has a table um, containing some student information regarding an exam. And I have two more tables in separate Excel files, um, which have the similar data. What I want to do is to combine this data into one table. Now, as an example over here, this data table contains the student information, their name, as well as their student ID. Now, I want to use their student ID as a reference um, to actually look up their grade, because as you can see, the final grade is linked to a student ID. Once I find their final grade, as you can see, the student ID also is linked to a department. So based on that department, I can go ahead and I can actually look at the average grade for that particular department. So essentially, we're going to be consolidating the data from all three of these tables into one table using Power Pivot. You can go into File and you're going to go into Options. Once you hit Options, you're going to select Add-ins. You're going to select Power Pivot. And as you can see, Power Pivot is a COM add-in. So you're going to select COM add-ins over here. And then after that, you're going to go into OK. And from there, you can get Power Pivot. So we're going to open up a fresh Excel file in order for us to do this data modeling over here. I'm actually going to close the Excel files with the tables because when I upload these tables into this Excel file, when I import them here, I can't have those files open. I'm going to go into Power Pivot and select Manage. And I'm going to select uh, Import External Data. And I can import it from various databases, but in my case, I'm going to be doing it from another source. And that is going to be an Excel file. Okay, remember our data was in three Excel files. So one by one, we're going to import them into here. I'm going to click on Next, and I'm going to select Use First Row as Column Headers, because in all three of my data, the data was a tabular format with the first row as columns, okay? I'm going to select Browse. And I will one by one open up all of these Excel files. So we'll start off with department and we'll open that up. Next, it opens up and I can also preview the data if I'd like. Um, this is kind of how it looks. It's similar, in, in fact, the same as the table that I showed you earlier. I'm gonna go ahead and hit finish and close and that loads up over here, okay? Which is great. Now, Let's go ahead and let's import the remaining two tables as well in the same format. Okay, so I have all three tables loaded into my uh, data model over here. And now it's time to establish a connection between the three tables. So this table has the uh, student first name, last name, and the student ID. Now, the student ID is a link to another table as well. As you can see, this table over here uses the student ID to determine their final grades. Okay, so student ID is actually a link between data two and data. Okay, and as you can see from this table, we can determine the student's department, and that department is a link to the data one table, which actually tells us the average, highest, and lowest grades based on the department. So our links over here are going to be student ID to link to this table over here and then department to link to this table over here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select a diagram view, and now we know what we're looking for. We can go ahead and start to build our data model. First name, last name, and student ID. That's gonna be linked to the table which shows us the student ID, department, and the final grade. So I'm gonna bring these two tables over here, okay? So I'm gonna select student ID, and I'm gonna drag it to the student ID over here. Okay, so now I've established a relationship between the student ID in this table and the student ID in this table. Now, this table has a department number, which is actually going to be the link to show our department over here, okay? So I'm going to select this one over here, department, and I'm going to link it to the department over here, okay? And what I can do then is I can kind of drag these so that uh, it's easier to it's easier to visualize. Now, essentially, what we're saying is this is our main table here with the student first name, last name, and the student ID. 
and that student ID links to the student ID in this table, which tells us the department, the final grade, and some other exam details. Now we're going to use the department from this table to tell us, to link us to the department in this third table. And this third table tells us the lowest, highest, and, and average grade of that particular department. One thing important to note is you see the one and the asterisk. This basically means a one-to-many relationship. So in our case over here, the department table had only one occurrence of department, whereas this data table had multiple occurrences of the same department name. And thus, we have one-to-many over here. Now I can go ahead and exit back into data view. So now in this uh, data table over here, I'm going to actually determine the average grade in this department, okay, for the student. So uh, later on, I'll determine the student's name and all of that information as well. But first of all, I just want to determine the average grade based on this department so that we can see how the student um, stands against the average. So I'm going to go into equals to related. So the related is the formula that we will be using. Open brackets and we'll select data one mean grade. Okay, and we'll close the bracket here. And that's going to give us the average grade uh, for this department. Okay, so what I can do over here is I can actually change this to AVG grade. And I'm going to actually drag this down so that it's over here. Okay, right beside final grade. So I can see kind of the student, the student's department, the department's average grade, and that student's final grade. Now, I also want to, of course, determine what the student's name is, okay? So in order to determine the student's name, I can actually reference their student ID. So I'm gonna go back here, equals to related, open bracket, and I'll select the data two the first name and I'll close the bracket and press enter. Now that we've determined the name of the student, this is the first name. We can also do the same tactic to determine the last name. And I'll bring that to our second column over here. So now we can see the student ID. We can see their name, their department, the average grade in that department and the final grade in that department as well. So what I did was I took this uh, main data table. This, is, this is, was one of the three tables and I pulled in information from the remaining two tables. From this table, I pulled in the students, uh, the average grade of the department. And from this table over here, I pulled in the student's first name and I kind of consolidated all of that information to create this table over here. Now, one thing I'll mention over here is if you go back to diagram view, you may receive or encounter some errors as you do this. Now, if I go into any one of these connections, for example, student ID in data two and student ID in data, I'm gonna double click the connection over here. Make sure that the connection is active, first of all. And secondly, make sure that the correct uh, columns are highlighted. So as you can see, student ID in this table is highlighted and student ID in this table is also highlighted. So if first name was highlighted in this table, for example, and we click OK, as you can see, it's going to give us an error. And if this error kind of continues on, uh, what's going to happen is that when you do these formulas, the related formulas, you might receive some errors in your Excel file. And that's what happened to me as well. So make sure that you're being cognizant of your diagram view and making sure that the relationships are correct. Once that foundation is laid out, it's just a matter of using the related formula to kind of consolidate one table. So I hope you found this video helpful. This was kind of a, a basic video on how you can use Power, uh, Power Pivot. Um, if you did find it helpful, please do subscribe and drop a, drop a like. Until then, I'll see you very shortly in the next video. Thanks for watching.